This is going to be a no bullshit video. This is going to be a deep dive into the Berry M, the collaboration between Audio Assault and Buried Alive. This video is completely unbiased. It's my own opinion. I'm not getting paid to say anything. I've not been sent anything to say anything. I've been asked to say anything. Everything in this video is my own opinion because I might be biased towards Buried Alive. Love Charles. Love Kaylee. But if you want to give me a good tone, better be a good tone or I'm going to call you out on it. So, without further ado. I guess we could just, you know, dive right into it. I pulled the plugin up right here, and it's currently running one of my presets called Blackberry, which is one I recently dialed in. Now let me show you around real quick. So we start off with the pedals. This is a pedal section. So you got a noise gate, a booster pedal, and a screamer pedal. We got amps, the blue amp, which is more of an all-around versatile amp. It's got a rhythm and a lead channel, and then all of the knobs, obviously. And then we got the red amp, which is vintage and modern. Vintage sounds really, well, vintage. It's a really cool metal amp that you can use for both modern and vintage sounding metal. That's just how it works. And then there's the... I guess it's a green yellowish amp. This is, it looks like an acoustic amp. It's not really an acoustic amp. It is a clean amp in this plugin though. It's got a clean and a crunch. The clean is super clean and the crunch is more grungy sounding depending on how high you put the gain and of course in with the pedals. Um, so that's something that you can figure out for yourself. I don't use a lot of cleans. If I do use cleans, they have to be super, super sparkly. This plugin does that really well. For the caps, this is the impulse response loader. This is the one that I use. You can also just use the 3D cap. So we got the demon berry cap, the raisin hell cap, and the fixaw cap. There is a huge tone difference in these three caps. I'll show you that when we get to the tone testing. By the way, this is an amazing feature. I'm just going to put that out there. If you don't want to mess around with this, you can just select these or you can just go to the default 3D caps impulses. But I use the impulse response loader. Just gives you a little bit more freedom. In the effects track, the first thing we have here is a harmonizer. Disclaimer, there is an 18 millisecond delay on the harmonizer right now. They're looking into a fix of it. They're uh, going to solve that with the next update. But right now there's an 18 millisecond delay if you use a harmonizer. It's barely noticeable on slower stuff, but when you play really fast stuff like the crazy alien stuff that Charles does it, it, you, you're gonna notice you're gonna notice uh, other than that we have a built-in EQ which is currently EQ really weird it's not turned on so I don't know why I did that I think I was just playing around with the sliders to see how they respond um, then we got a delay and a reverb some basic stuff although I do have to say the reverb on this one sounds really good compared to other plugins that I have let's get into my first preset to get used to it preset I had to build this one in this uh, in this plugin and if you don't know get used to it if you don't know this track that's um, from this riff So that's from that song. It's the track that I released um, praising Buried Alive, basically. Um, I rebuilt that entire guitar tone in this plugin. So this preset is going to be available in the future. Um, I can't just give it out and shit. So going to have to wait a little bit for that. But this preset is going to be available in the future. This is a very, very spanky, very tight and high treb, high mid preset. It's just to get a lot of those accents out, you know, like a little... You can't do that with a regular metal tone. Now you might see that I have multiple guitars set up here. This is currently my 7th string. I will be using the 6th, 7th and 8th string in this entire demo because dynamically plugins can sound different with different type of guitars and I want you to get like a clear comparison. Now this preset is very clangy and very bright. The Blackberry preset is one that I recently did and it sounds, well, basically it has like this black metal vibe but with a modern twist to it. Like you can literally... You can use it for any type of, of, of music, but it sounds really... You know, it has that clarity, but also has that heaviness when you just want to go... But if you, like, just in the same way when you want to... It's 
just sounds really, really good. But if I would use that on my sixth string, for example, you're going to notice that it sounds entirely different. Just a good all-around metal tone. Now, it sounds way beefier than the Get Used To It preset, but that is just to leave a lot of versatility in the mix come true. You know, you can EQ this in whatever way you want. Talking about EQ production processing, every tone that you hear in this video, I'll put a disclaimer at the start as well, is coming directly from the plugin. So there is no processing, no production, nothing. Everything you hear is coming straight out of the plugin. If we put this to the test, with the chords. It just sounds so incredibly good. I told you guys there's an harmonizer in here. Obviously, I have a preset with that because I'm that guy. And it's the same preset as I get used to a preset, just with the harmonizer active. So let me show you that one real quick. Now you can tell when I'm playing slowly it's activating quite nicely even when I play a little bit faster it's quite okay but if you want to get your Rings of Saturn gig on You'll notice that it starts to sound a bit muddy, and that's not because the tone is bad, it's because the harmonizer is lagging 18 milliseconds, you know? If you're just gonna... You can tell that there's a delay on it. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a way that you can just separate the tracks for now and just dry harmonize it, but I, I don't fuck with that too much to be honest so i don't really care but it's really cool that it's in here you know i now have it set to a minor shifted five steps up and then you can just change the width on this so if i take the width all the way down it sounds way tighter as well if i turn the reverb off It's just, it, it's it's so fucking dope. It's, a, it's the coolest feature that I've seen in a plugin. So far, it sounds absolutely, yeah, ridiculous when I'm using it. I don't play at lightning speed that much, so I don't notice the delay. Now, when you get the plugin uh, straight out of the box, there's going to be a few presets in here, the Charles presets. I'm not going to showcase these. You can just test these out for yourself. They're going to be included in the preset. I have one more preset that I build, which is a toy as fuck jaunt. Um, yeah, that's basically what it is. <laughs> It cuts out all the noise, <laughs> literally everything. Let me show you. The <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The fact that I have the noise gate turned up so high, just. <laughs> I mean, it works.
It just sounds really tight. Let me show it with the seven string and the eight string so you can hear the difference in that as well. Because on the six string, it sounds really clear and bright. It does change when you go to lower tunings or different, you know, extended range guitars. So here's the same preset on the seven string. Just cuts off immediately, but it's, you can tell that it sounds way... It sounds beefier, but also clangier. Probably, there's a lot of things that affect this. Your play style, your strings, your guitar, a lot of things. But you can tell that it's changing dynamically when I'm switching between guitars. Let's switch to the eight string, because obviously, gent, so... <sighs> Got my berry strap on. The fact that this still sounds good is so important to me because it's so hard to make an 8-string sound good in a plugin. Now, according to my guitars, I will tweak a little bit on the presets. Like, for example, for my 8-string, I will take the gain down a bit because it has active EMGs. So it's going to sound way better when I take the gain down a bit. It's going to sound way clearer, so... That's just the low notes though. Higher on the neck as well. I mean, if you guys are fans of uh, a version's crown. Just sounds really, really good. I'm gonna switch back to the six string so you guys can get like a clear example, especially if you're trying to plug it for yourself and you don't have extended range guitars. I wanna use a six string so it's like the most accessible for everyone. And then we're gonna go through the sound of the different cabs and then the impulse responses. Uh, I'll tell you my final opinions on the plugin. And then you can go to audioassault.com and check it out for yourselves because you can demo this amp for free, completely for free. So why wouldn't you, you know? All right, let me go back to my preset and then let's show you guys how everything affects what you're doing within the amp we're on the starter amp. this is a blue amp so i have it set to the lead channel for this preset if you switch it to the rhythm channel it's going to reset the knobs so it's kind of a default setting this is how it comes straight out of the box sounds a bit i don't know i was playing that I don't know what that riff reminded me of, but if you know, let me know in the comments. But then... Oh, it's saying anger, never mind. Okay, so apparently this amp also comes with the Saint anger preset. Now, the rhythm channel, you can turn this gain all the way up. And it sounds really good, you know, especially when you have the pedal section activated. If I turn all the pedals off though, so there's nothing boosting the amp right now, this is how it sounds with the gain maxed out. And that's not changing any of the knobs. Now, if I put on a different cap, for example, let's use the 3D cap. So this is how the Demonberry cap sounds. This is how the Raisin Hellcap sounds. I should stop playing that riff. I'm going to get copyright claims. <laughs> That's how that one sounds. And then this is a 2x12.
very different all together. Now I use the impulse responses. You can select whichever one fits you best. Just go through them, look at them and see what fits the sound that you're looking for or just use the basic caps because you know if you use the caps you can move the microphones around you can just like the distance you know you can move it back and forward it basically works like a neural dsp plugin but cheaper and better now if i switch this to the lead channel it's gonna take my preset so let's uh, reset that all this is how the lead channel of this amp sounds without tweaking anything <laughs> If you turn the gain all the way up. Oh, that riff reminds me of Beartooth. Now I know. So that's that. Let's go into the next one. The red amp, my personal favorite. Switch it to vintage. So that would come straight out of the box. I personally don't prefer the vintage sound until I turn up the gain. But even then, again, there's no pedals active. So this is just the amp that you're hearing. And then when you switch it to modern. You can tell it already sounds way clearer, way spankier. Turn up the gain all the way. That's just how that works. And then the clean amp, let's put it on crunch. <laughs> yeah, I don't use cleans a lot, so don't expect some Tim Henson shit from me. Like, Turn this gain all the way up. You can hear it creeping in in the back, but that's just, you know, the regular crunch. And if we put it to clean. I, I really don't use cleans. <laughs> With the gain all the way turned up, sounds like this. Yeah, that's basically everything in the plugin. I'm going to switch back to my preset, the BlackBerry preset. And I'm going to show you guys a few little things that you might not find right away in this plugin. Uh, let me show you the delay and the reverb also real quick. So this is how that sounds. Just put the delay a little bit further or you can sync it if you want. Turn it up in the mix. Sounds so good just to be coming straight out of a plugin. One thing that is really cool about the preset, obviously we have our tuner. It's going absolutely bananas right now. 
As you can see, I'm perfectly in tune. So we love that. You got the option to switch between 440 and 432. I don't know why you would do that, but you know. And then we have in the settings, your input routing for me is left quality set to low. I don't really know what this changes, to be honest. I've been playing around with it. There's nothing really changing. Same with the graphics, native and OpenGL. I don't see anything changing at all. <laughs> So I don't know what that's about. Um, the double track, though, is really cool. So let me hold on. Just to show you what that does. Sounds really cool. Easy for doing like fast demos. Other than that, that's gonna be it for this plugin. That is the Berry Amp, the Berry Live signature plugin in collaboration with Audio Assault. I have to say, I use a lot of amp sims, like a lot. And this is by far for the price and for what you're getting the best plugin on the market right now. There are a few cons in my personal opinion, not necessarily things that will stop you from buying it, but things that I would like to see done maybe a little bit better. Um, one thing that I, as I said in the settings, I don't know what this quality does. I don't know what this graphics does. I don't know what those settings do. It would be nice to show like a little prompt when you hover over it to like, yo, if you change this, this is what's gonna happen. That would be really nice. Other than that, the tuner, I would not change the tuner. The presets, there is a little thingy that I had to figure out because you can't just load in a preset from the folder. That's something that does not work. You have to open the data folder and then go into the preset folder and then drag presets into that folder and then it will load them up in the plugin. So it's like two or three clicks more, but it's just like it would be an ease of life improvement, something like that. I don't know. I, I can't remember what it's called, but like a small update like that would make everything so much easier to just to load in plugins and uh, to load in presets and to just share presets with other people would make that way, way easier. Other than that, I don't think that there's anything else that I would say that is bad on this plugin, you know, that could use some improvement. I don't care that it doesn't look super, super fancy. It just needs to work and that it does very well. It's super functional. What I do miss, and I said this to Charles, I think yesterday, yeah. Uh, one thing that will complete this plugin entirely is a built-in pitch shifter. Cause that's something that Charles uses a lot. He uses a pod 600 pitch, I think, but a built-in pitch shifter that we maybe could automate that would just complete this plugin and of course fix the 18 millisecond delay on the harmonizer but i know they're already working on that so if you want to test this out for yourself head over to audio assault you can demo the plugin for free you can see what it has to offer for you if it's a good buy or not so you're not spending any money unless you're completely satisfied with this plugin hope this video helped you out hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you all in the next one Bye bye